Good morning to everybody who's here for Tobelta Day 2. Uh, thanks for coming. We had a great day yesterday, about 200, 250 participants over the course of the day. So hopefully uh, we have a similar attendance throughout today. And, and uh, our first session in the TESOL Toronto room is um, by Miguel and Lewis. And I'm going to introduce them quickly. So uh, Miguel is on his way to earn a master's degree in open and distance education from UNA, an experienced K-12 and adult teacher. He founded and heads MFL Academy in San Felipe, Uruguay State. His main areas of interest are ICT and learning technologies in ELT. And you can find him on Twitter there. I put that in the chat box. And Lewis is an English teacher from the University of Carabobo in 2012. He was part of Ben Tessel uh, Board of Directors as the Secretary of the organization from 2013 to 2015. And he's currently Ben Tessel's Communications Coordinator and Webmaster. He has experience teaching ESP at several companies of Valencia City. So we're going to learn today about Kahoot. So I'm very excited to hear about this because I don't know anything about it. Uh, <laughs> so it's now over to you guys. Have a great session. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tyson. Um, so hello, everybody. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Um, well, uh, we are, as Tyson mentioned, we are Miguel Perez and Luis Jordan. We are part of Ventigo Communications uh, team. We are the communications coordinator of Ventigo, which is Venezuela Tigo. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, a tool that is called Kahoot. Uh, it's a game-based formative assessment tool. So, um, first we're going to talk about what is formative assessment. And we're going to talk about what is Kahoot. And how do we use Kahoot in the EFL, EF, ESL classroom? And we're going to mention other uses for Kahoot. And what what are the things that you can do with it? And um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Good morning to everybody who's here for Tobelta Day 2. Uh, thanks for coming. We had a great day yesterday, about 200, 250 participants over the course of the day. So hopefully uh, we have a similar attendance throughout today. And, and uh, our first session in the TESOL Toronto room is um, by Miguel and Lewis. And I'm going to introduce them quickly. So. Uh, Miguel is on his way to earn a master's degree in open and distance education from UNA, an experienced K-12 and adult teacher. He founded and heads MFL Academy in San Felipe, Uruguay State. His main areas of interest are ICT and learning technologies in ELT. And you can find him on Twitter there. I put that in the chat box. And Lewis is an English teacher from the University of Carabobo in 2012. He was part of Ben Tessel uh, Board of Directors as the Secretary of the organization from 2013 to 2015. And he's currently Ben Tessel's Communications Coordinator and Webmaster. He has experience teaching ESP at several companies of Valencia City. So we're going to learn today about Kahoot. So I'm very excited to hear about this because I don't know anything about it. Uh, so it's now over to you guys. Have a great session. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tyson. Um, so, hello, everybody. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Um, well, uh, we are, as Tyson mentioned, we are Miguel Perez and Luis Jordan. We are part of Ventigo Communications uh, team. We are the Communications Coordinator of Ventigo, which is Venezuela Tigo. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, a tool that is called Kahoot. Uh, it's a game-based formative assessment tool. So, um, first we're going to talk about what is formative assessment. And we're going to talk about what is Kahoot. 
And how do we use Kahoot in the EFL, EF, ESL classroom? Um, we're going to mention other uses for Kahoot. Um, what, what are the things that you can do with it? Um, okay. Uh, with this. Uh, I would like to ask you a question about what is formative assessment? Maybe not a definition, but if you can type on the chat like some keywords uh, or characteristics of formative assessment um, that you can mention before I talk about it, it would be nice. Can you do that? Okay. So it's information about students' performance. Uh, it has like two, two scopes, uh, the teacher's point of view and the student's point of view. Uh, for, teacher, for, for our students, it is um, is to check of their understanding and also practice. For the teacher, um, it is information to adjust uh, the teacher practice um, to adjust learning while it is still happening. So these are some of the characteristics. And uh, as, as you mentioned, I think I think you more or less said this already. So it is part of the learning process. Um, we provide feedback uh, on students' performance and learning. Um, it, it guides us our decisions for for future action. It can be formal. That specific tool is called Kahoot. Uh, we have here this definition says Kahoot is a completely free multi-device classroom response system for creating and administering unique game-like quizzes that empowers educators and captivates learners uh, of any age. So let me let me revise this. So first and very important is free. Uh, second, a multi-device. That means that you can play with different types of device. Basically, anything that has a browser can use to be play Kahoot. So you can use a phone. Uh, you can use you can use a computer, a smartphone, tablet, laptop, whatever. Um, if you have phone, uh, for example, if you have an Android phone, you can download an app uh, from App Store to play this game, which is basically what I advise you to do. If you have an Android phone, please uh, download the app. It is called Kahoot. It is like a K with a question mark, the logo, so we can play it later. Uh, or if you have any other type of phone or any device, you just can, uh, we give you a link so you can go and, and play on the browser. It is very, very simple. And we can, if we can play this uh, in any setting, schools, university, businesses, uh, in any type of level will be fine. It depends on how you make the question. So, um, uh, well, this is part of um, Kahoot Pedagogy. Um, it is called the Learner to Leader Cycle, and uh, this is not created by us. This is uh, recommended by Kahoot itself. Um, they say that their the pedagogy is based on this cycle where students go from learner to leader. And it basically has to do with uh, students uh, sharing what they know uh, with other students. So. We start this cycle when, when first the teacher um, introduces uh, a topic to the students, and then um, they get to play a Kahoot in order to monitor learning. Uh, so from these steps, it's very basic. But then this uh, loop continues when the teacher asks students to create their own their own Kahoot. Um, so in this case. The students have to be researchers. They need to research information. They need to build up knowledge in order to create content. Uh, and then they need to create quizzes using uh, the content that they have generated. Uh, so they become the teacher. The students can become the teacher when they show this quiz that they have prepared to their peers, and therefore they're going to be also the leaders of the class. So the, student, the teacher can uh, assess students' performance 
the student's understanding based on the quality of the content. Um, it is very important and uh, uh, for the for the students, it's very important not only about what what is the right answer, but also is it, it will be interesting to evaluate to assess uh, what are the wrong answers that students show um, to distract other students. So I think that is also a very important part to to take into consideration when assessing students. Um, Kahoot has uh, different features. Um, we can find a quiz. We can we can have discussions. We can have um, uh, surveys. Uh, in the case of quizzes um, regarding to the skills that we practice, for quizzes we can practice listening and reading, um, which are the research skills. We can also have discussions uh, in which we practice speaking. Discussions is basically uh, the app allows me to ask questions and the students uh, answer and automatically I know how many students answer the questions in one way or the other and we can discuss about it. Don't worry, we're going to show you how, how, how uh, some examples so you understand better uh, about these two. This is an example question. For example, here we have, how do you write the following amount in English? So we have here the answers. We have, for example, $76.76, and $67.76, etc. Um, uh, it is important to keep in mind uh, this. Maybe you're going to have like a projector in class uh, or a computer in class and the computer will show this, the question. Uh, you will have approximately 30 seconds. Question number two. What, uh, what is the best answer for the following question? Can I see those key change please? So we have here the time and we have here the possible answers that students need to select. This actually gets kind of fun because uh, sometimes it is, it is kind of uh, fast and it, when students finish uh, selecting, it automatically says who wins and it will be uh, tell you. Um, so uh, to make it more interactive, we can add an uh, example. For example, uh, this is the Monastery of Petra. One of seven world wonders, and where is it located? So we have here four options: uh, Jordan, Pakistan, Egypt, or India. Uh, so tell me what what do you think? Where is it located? Okay, I will. I will, uh, I will, I'm getting here some answers. Uh, good, but I'm not going to say the right answer because we're going to play later. So then later we will discover that if that is true. Thank you, Gordana. Um, uh, well, if you have a YouTube video, you can embed your video to the to the quiz. And for example, I show my students this video. Uh, maybe it portrays several animals and their lifestyles. And I say, which of these animals live alone? So here have the bear, lion, zebras, elephants, and they and they choose. Um, it is important to remember they will only see text on this screen, maybe on a uh, projector, a video. Okay, and we're also going to talk about uh, other uses for Kahoot um, because it's going to tell us this information. So, Miguel? Thanks, Luis. So, yeah, so we have plenty of uses for Kahoot. Uh, uh, the first one I'm going to be talking about is global classrooms. As you can see, there is a hashtag in there, uh, and that's because that's what we teachers use uh, to go onto Twitter to find all the classrooms around the continent or around the world to play Kahoot with. Uh, if you go onto Twitter and type that hashtag in there, you will find uh, plenty of teachers looking for uh, for the classroom to play the game. And it's quite interesting because you get to uh, to meet all the uh, students and all the teachers from around the world. Um, it, it has no limits uh, in, in terms of uh, how many students you can get to play the game. Okay, I've seen online. I've seen that there are more than uh, 100 people connected to to play a single game. So that's quite interesting. Um, they can do this uh, 
through Google Hangouts, they can do it through Skype or uh, through appear.in. Okay, let me just type it quite quickly onto the chat box. Okay, because in this case, you will be sharing your screen with uh, the other platform. Okay, that once again, it could be uh, it could be in the same system that you that you teach. It could be in the same country. It could be in the same country and all in a different part of the world. Okay, um, you can also use Kahoot uh, as a survey tool. Okay, at the beginning of the school year or the beginning of a level that you're teaching, um, you can use it to find out information about your students, information about uh, how often they go online. Um, what do they do at home to practice their, their English as well? Okay, so this is quite useful. Um, we also have ghost mode, but I'm going to be focusing on that further on when uh, onto the next slide. We'll be talking in depth about the ghost mode. Uh, you, we also have the student made quizzes. Um, the student made quizzes, uh, as Luis said at the beginning. Um, as we said at the beginning, um, these quizzes uh, are created by the, by, by the students. Okay? In this case, students become the, uh, the leaders of the classroom. They can design uh, the, the quizzes with the information they find out on the internet or they find out from the books. Okay? And it is quite interesting because they have to research. They have to prepare the questions. They have to prepare the answers. Okay? So we're uh, giving control to the students. Uh, control of their own learning as well. Okay, and through this, they can challenge uh, their classmates. Uh, we, can use, we can use it as an informal diagnostic test, once again, at the beginning of your, of your school year, in the middle of your school year, or at the end of the school year. You can use it uh, as an informal diagnostic test. We can encourage reflection, because it's not only about giving the right or wrong answer, but also why. Okay, so we have we, we can discuss once these uh, answers have shown up on the on the projection. Okay, why is it correct? Why is it incorrect? Why is it true or false? Okay, um, we can also use it to introduce a new topic, um, maybe a topic that tends to be a, a bit boring or a bit difficult to teach. We can you we can introduce it with Kahoot, so they can see the fun part of it. And also, we can use it as an end of term activity. I have done this activity with my uh, with my students' parents, and I ask questions about what they have learned during the school year, and parents are the ones uh, answering the questions. And it's quite fun. And you can also see the, the engagement. Um, students help their parents, their parents, and so and so on. And it's quite good. Um, another use. Um, I've done it recently. I named it. Workbook work because I, I work with course books. Um, workbooks are a part of the course book that students don't tend to do on their own. So what I do is I extract information from from the workbooks and I put it onto Kahoot and we play a game after each unit has been taught. So there is another way of having the students do activities and do uh, homework. Now. Um, the ghost mode um, is a feature that allows players to play a Kahoot game. Okay? Uh, they can compete against their peers and also they compete against against themselves. Okay? Once again, we were saying that this is a synchronous tool, so they have to be online. Okay? They cannot play it. Uh, uh, they cannot play on their own. Okay? So then there needs to be uh, a teacher uh, controlling the entire game. Okay, and the, the score looks like this, a scoreboard. Okay, the first time you play it, we have marking there. And the second time you play it, you play it. Good. Now, how to create? It's very simple to create a Kahoot. Okay, you go on to getkahoot.com. Okay, that's the the account, the, the website um, for for teachers to create their accounts and the, for uh, to create quizzes. And the first step is just edit your question. Okay. Uh, the, then we have some formatting tools. We have the bold formatting tool, italics. Uh, you can also have, uh, as we said before, you can embed uh, images from your computer, um, and you can also embed videos, but from YouTube only. Okay. 
so you can run embed videos from your from your desktop. Uh, you can select the time over here that you want the question to last. So we want to go on to how Kahoot looks like. Uh, as we said before, uh, you need a projector okay, because the answers won't be shown on your devices. Okay, for example, we have in there where's the Eiffel Tower located in Paris, and uh, we have the four options in there. Okay, my, my French is not really good, but I'm going to try my best to, to read the options. Uh, uh, so I'm really sorry about my French. Uh, <laughs> Chandemar, Chandemar. Bois de Boulogne, Boulogne, uh, Pas de la Ville. Okay, so which one of those options do you think is the correct one? Is it the triangle? Is it the hexagon? Is it the oval? Is it the square? What is the Eiffel Tower location in Paris? What do you think? Let's see if, if we get any, any answers here. So, Let's try it out. I hope you have your cell phones. I hope you have your tablets uh, with you. And you can also do it on your browser, okay, on your laptop browser. What I'm going to do now is to uh, screen share my browser. And we're going to be playing Kahoot. Okay, so I hope So there, there I have it. Um, I have the play now button, which is the one I'm going to be clicking on. So the first step is to join in. Just go onto your web browser and type kahoot.it. Kahoot.it. That's what you're going to be typing. Okay. Um, once you're going to launch your Kahoot, there are plenty of options you can you can turn on and turn off. You can display the game view throughout the, the whole game, which is the, like the access code for the game. Uh, you can randomize the, the order of the questions, you can randomize the order of the answers in each question, and so on. And you can also play music in the lobby uh, while you, you're waiting for the game to start. Okay, so let me just launch it uh, so you can see the, the game pin. Okay, that's the first thing they're going to ask you. Okay, so there you have join at Kahoot IT, and the game pin is twenty five nine four double zero. So what you have to do is basically go to Kahoot IT, and uh, and then they're going to ask you for a code, and then you you write this code here two. Five nine four zero oh, oh. zero. Okay, good. We have Jan and John. Okay, we have Addy as well. Ah, uh, Addy. Okay. Hi, hi. Plenty of people there. Yes. Okay, let's wait a few more seconds so we can also for the rest to join. We have five players already. Katarina. It, look, well. it looks kind of slow because of the platform, but when you play it, it will be much faster and smoother. Yeah. It all depends on your broadband uh, internet connection as well. Okay, so we have six players. I think we can get started. Is anyone else joining right now? So we can wait a little bit. We have seven players. Is anybody else joining? Okay, I think we should get started right now. Okay, let's just get get started there. So let's start with the first question. You can have to read everything from the from the screen. At this point you need to watch an excerpt of a video, so be careful about it.
we have high answers, that's really good. We need two more. Good. So the name of the man of the man wearing the pink blazer was Bruno Mars. So five of you got uh, the correct answer. That's brilliant. So let's see what's your score right now. Exactly. If if you stop the, the screen sharing, you will. You, I mean, your students won't see the, the questions in there. So we have Jen on the first place. Yeah, one thousand points. That's really good. We're gonna have John Tyson, Trinidad, Adi. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, we have seven questions left. Okay, so you can uh, get on to the first three places. Go to the next. Four answers. That's really good. Two seconds, one second, and that's it. Time's up. So is the yellow one. It is over. It hearts. Okay. Well, let's see what's the score now. Jan just won the first place. 1,867 points. That's really good. So, the score takes into consideration not only the answer, but also the time that you take to answer. Okay. Um, and the thing is that um, this option, um, I mean, the faster you answer, the more the more points you get. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So now we have the correct answer. The fact that you got it right. Throughout the animal kingdom, only the whale is bigger than the elephant. Well done. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Oh, we have Jen still in the first place. Well done, Jen. That's really, really good. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Question number four. What color is the legacy of standard DVD players? Yeah, you're on fire. That's good. <laughs> Two, one, and that's it. Yeah. So the the laser is red. That's your standard color for the laser DVD players. Good. Well, let's move on to the next one. Oh, Jen is still in the first place. Well done, Jen. Then John, Tyson, Adi, Ludmilla. Well done. Okay, that question that you saw on the, on the slide. Where is the Eiffel Tower located in Paris? We can try. You have to give your best shot. Good. You sound them off. <laughs> yeah, you have no time to Google. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you sound them off. Okay. That's really good. Okay, let's see who's the first place. John is now in the first place. Well done. Then Tyson. Then Jen. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so it was Apollo 11, okay, and you can Google a, a little bit more afterwards, okay? Um, okay, so we have a question from the instructor. Um, I cannot, uh, I can see at the end how many correct answers you got and how many incorrect answers you got. Uh, as well as downloading a, a, a result sheet. Okay, you can get it there, but not at the moment. Okay. Um, right, let's move on to the next one. We have question number seven. The monastery at Petra. Where is it located? Oh. Is Jordan, Pakistan, India, or Egypt? Where are the options? Six seconds. Four, three, two, one. What time is up? Yeah, some of you got it right. It was in Jordan. It's in Jordan. Okay, well done. Okay, and the last question. Let's see who, let's see the scoreboard. John is on first place. Well done, John. Then Tyson and Jen, Lila, Adi, okay, brilliant. Let's go now on to the last question of this quiz. That's quite easy. Angelina Jolie. That's correct. So let's see the final score. Okay. They have John on the first place, then Tyson, then Jan, Mila Abby. So well done, everybody. You've done really, really well. Okay. Um, once you end the, the game um, on your smartphone, you will get uh, uh, you will get an opportunity for you to give feedback. If you had fun, if you learned. Okay, so please click on them and then we see the results in there. If you recommend the game, how do you feel about the game? Then let's see if it updates when you give your uh, your feedback. Okay, we have three ratings. That's good. Okay, so um, once you get all the ratings done, you go into the final results. And then you have the, the final scoreboard. You can download the results. You can uh, save them onto your Google Drive. Um, you can play the game again. You can play it uh, with the uh, ghost mode, the one I talked to you about. <laughs> yeah, we, we're doing it for this one. You can play it as a ghost mode. You can beat your own score or beat your classmates' scores. But you have to play straight away in the classroom. So that was um, how to use Kahoot. Um, as you can see, you can have lots of fun with it. Okay. Yeah, the, the music, the timing uh, is also good. You, you, you can have 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, depending on the difficulty of the, of the questions. Okay. Um, so final thoughts. Okay. At the beginning, just create a sample Kahoot to try out the interface with the students. Okay, so they get used to how to play, uh, where to tap on their cell phones or the tablets. Um, yeah, just to get them used to, to the platform. 
Okay. Uh, make sure you have a reliable broadband internet connection. Okay, that is quite necessary. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be quite slow. Um, avoid overuse. You have to save for special moments. Okay, I do it um, every other month. Okay, so they 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 look forward to to playing. Um, they don't get bored by playing it much. Okay, we'll provide the the links on on the next slide. Okay, so. Um, don't worry. Uh, if you don't have enough devices, just group your students. You can be in pairs or triads, but not more than a triad for per, per device, because otherwise, uh, not all of them are going to be participating in the game. Okay, um, they will get bored. Um, you have to regroup your teams frequently, so you can avoid hostility from from each other. Like I won last time, we will beat you again. The other way to provide a, a safe environment for uh, for the students. Um, they have to uh, focus on, on the learning. Mm -hmm. The competition is really good, okay? Um, but you need to control uh, how competitive they get because uh, they might get a bit nasty. So we need to uh, uh, make sure that doesn't happen, okay? The links, okay? You can create your Kahoot by going to this link, getkahoot.com. Um, yes. The team changes every time you play. So um, every time you create a Kahoot, the team changes. Okay. Uh, for the students who play the Kahoot, just go to Kahoot.it. And to get more ideas and updates, you can you can go to blog.getkahoot.com. If you want to download this presentation, you can find it. Well, I will provide you. We will provide the links uh, if you ask. Uh, if you ask us. Uh, on Twitter, we will give you the links in there. Okay, and there is also a handout um, uh, that we will provide them through Twitter. Okay, so once again, um, thank you very much for attending. I hope you, you have liked it. I hope you, you get to play with your students now that the new school, school year is starting. I hope you, you play with your students with them and, and share with us how everything went. So if you have um, if you have any questions, okay, uh, you can uh, follow us on Twitter. My Twitter handle is M A Perez Ramos and Mrs. Uh, Twitter handle is Jordan Carroll. Okay, or you can also send us an email. Okay, Diego Perez at UC at gmail .com and L Jordan at UC at gmail .com. You can also find out more information about us. Uh, to our websites, www.ventisol.org uh, and www.ventisol.ning.com. Okay. Uh, I would like to mention, before we finish, that uh, if you go to getkahoot.com, I mean, you can you can see your own Kahoot, but it is important to mention that you can also use other Kahoot because Kahoot are public. So you can, you can, you can find different Kahoot that are made by other teachers, and if they work for you, you can use them. And also, you can share your Kahoot with other people. Like you can send them through email, so they get the link. Good. Thank you, Luis. Yeah, the other thing that when you send it through email, uh, that teacher needs to have a Kahoot account associated to that email, so they can get it um, on, on onto their profile. Okay. So, any questions? We're open to to questions. I think uh, you've been really clear, actually. Uh, yeah. If there are questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. I know that um, Elaine earlier asked, what's the pin? Uh, the yeah. pin changes uh, for every Kahoot. So every time you use it, the pin changes. So you cannot keep it. Just You just launch the Kahoot, it will show you a pin, you give it to your students, and they will get there. It changes every time. Great, thank you. I, uh, I'm. I have to say, I'm. It's sort of outside of my comfort zone to play games like this in class, but um, I had a good time, and uh, I can totally see that 
on occasion, it would be something that my students would probably be really happy to try out. That's right. 